Hey everybody, this is Bandor again. This is part five, I think it's part five, of our multi-part series on how to use Blender and Substance Painter to texture an object and bring it into Second Life so that it looks the best it can possibly look. So what we've done so far is we've taken our model from Blender, we've taken it into Substance Painter, we set up Substance Painter, we created uh, our mesh maps, baked them, exported our ambient occlusion map, We've brought the model into Second Life and we brought in our ambient occlusion maps and applied them to our model. And so you can see that it looks pretty sharp right now, uh, if I do say so myself. I think it looks pretty darn good. But that floor shadow doesn't look right. So how do we fix that? Well, there's a little trick you need to do in Photoshop. You can do the same thing in GIMP, but I don't know how to do it, so I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to show you how to do it in Photoshop. So. Here we are in Photoshop. I have a file prepared and make sure that you are, it's a uh, RGB is the, is the mode you want to be in, not grayscale. Uh, so if you open the shadow map for the, uh, the floor shadow directly, it's going to switch it to grayscale. So you're going to need to switch this to uh, RGB. But I've already set this up as RGB, so I'm just going to import the shadow map. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to hit F1 to import and I'm going to go to my export folder this is my export folder from substance painter and there is my chair shadow that it created for me and I'm going to pull it in here so you can definitely see it is a shadow on white and I want it to be a shadow on alpha or on transparent so in my in my layers over here I have a transparent layer here which is going to be the final background I also have a white background and a black background for testing the output of the shadow because uh, you don't want to have the situation occur, which I've had happen before. When I created a shadow with an alpha transparency layer, so it looked right, it looked like a shadow with transparency around it on a white background or on a light colored background, it looked right. But whenever I put it on a dark background, suddenly my shadows <clears throat> were no longer dark. They, they were white and light gray. And they stood out, and I went, what the heck happened? Now? Why do I have light gray shadows? Um, well, that technique that I had learned to create the shadows caused it, and it, it doesn't work correctly. This technique will work every single time, and it gives you a much better result. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our shadow, because I don't want to work on the original, so I'm going to create a layer called uh, Duplicate, and I'm going to work on that, and I'm going to hide, hide the first one. You don't have to do that. It's just a precaution. Then while working on this one, you're going to go up to your uh, magic, where the heck is it, magic wand tool, which is in here, yep, magnetic lasso, where is my magic wand tool? Alright, so I'm going to pick my magic wand tool, by default the tolerance is 32, Let's see what happens when I do that. Okay, so when I click my magic wand up here in the very, very, very upper left corner, um, it's picking a whole lot. And so it, if I delete that, it's going to move the shadow all the way down here. I think that's too tight, so the tolerance needs to be dropped. If I do 20 and then click up here in the upper left-hand corner, you can see it's much... Uh, it's a much bigger area of the shadow and that's better and this is what I want you want it to be close to the edge but not over the edge so that's what I want I'm gonna go over here to my copy make sure it's rasterized first and then just hit delete and it deleted it and you can see this is the white background showing through from down here if I turn that off and look at it on transparent you'll see that only the part out here where I deleted it is transparent the part in here is not transparent you don't notice that against a white background so much. Yeah, you kind of do. So uh, we have to figure out how to get rid of that. And there's an easy way. So with this layer selected, you deselect it so you don't want the little marching ants going around it. So you have it looking like this. Then you're going to do level. And levels can be done by either image levels or control L. Opens up your levels control panel. And then what we're going to do, you'll notice it looks weird to begin with. Like there's nothing over here and there's nothing over here. And then there's a whole bunch in the middle. What we're going to do is we're going to drag this to the left, and as we do, that's why you ha that's why we have the white background here, so we can see the background. As we drag this left, this sort of fades 
and blends into the white background. And you want to stop once it looks like it's blended in completely. So then it's starting to blend, starting to blend. Oh, look at that. It just disappeared. And curiously enough, it disappears at the point where this little triangle lines up with this cliff. It disappeared. But I'm going to go a little bit past that. And then this shadow is not really dark enough for me. So I notice that if you drag this one over to where the cliff is, it starts to look like a real shadow. Um, but you want to make sure that after you do that, that the edge around is still transparent, still blended in, and it looks like it is. See, if I go back, it's darker, and I need to move this over more to blend it in. So let's say about there. If I keep going, it just gets really small, and I don't want it to be that small. So I want it to be about here. I think that looks, I think that looks reasonably good. So I hit OK. All right, and the next thing you're going to do is you're going to open up the channels panel, which is right here. And these are the different channels that you have in the RGB. We're going to click this thing down here. This little, I don't even know what it is, but we're going to click that. And it did a selection, but we're going to invert that selection. So you go up to select and pick inverse. Then we'll go back to layers. We're going to add a layer on top of this. We're going to name that layer shadow. And then with that layer selected, we are then going to go up to edit, fill, and fill it with black. Then we can deselect. Now you can hide the other layer. You don't need it anymore. So now we can see our shadow nice and dark against a white background. How does it look against a black background? It looks solid black. It should look solid black because black on black is black. If this looked gray or white, you'd know you still had a problem with your shadow. But this is a black shadow on a black background and it should look black. But let's see how it looks on a transparent background. Ta-da! That's it. So now we're done. We just need to go up to do File, Export, do Export As. PNG is correct. You want to make sure transparency is on. 2048 by 2048 and hit export and then we're going to name that chair shadow I already have one called that so we'll call it chair shadow 2 and we are done with that let's go back to second life really quickly we're going to build upload image we're going to Pick Chair Shadow 2, which is the one I just created. Upload it. There it is. Drag it on. And poof, you have a floor shadow that is a shadow against transparent. And we are done with this part of the video. We'll see you in a few minutes, and we'll do something else.